Here's somebody dragging a suitcase across level ground, and the ground has a coefficient of friction with the suitcase of 0 0.4. So a force of 100 newtons is applied at an angle of 30 degrees, and that pulls the suitcase a distance of 15 meters. We want to find, first of all, the amount of work done by the applied force. Um, work is the dot product of force and displacement, but the result of that is work is equal to the magnitude of the force times the magnitude of the displacement times the cosine of the angle made between those two vectors. So in this case, it's a force of 100 newtons, a displacement of 15 meters, and the angle between those two vectors is 30 degrees. So the result we get in this case is about 1,300 joules. The amount of work done by the normal force is also the magnitude of the normal force multiplied by the magnitude of the displacement times the cosine of the angle between those vectors, but that's 90 degrees, and that gives us zero joules. The work done by the friction force is the magnitude of the friction force which is mu n, multiplied by the magnitude of the displacement times the cosine of the angle between those vectors, which in this case is 180 degrees. So uh, this part of the calculation is just going to give us a negative 1. Now we need to make a substitution for normal force. Let's look at a free body diagram and make sure your um, instinct might be to substitute mg for normal force, as we often do, but that's not always the case, so let's make sure. There's the force of gravity. There's the applied force. There's the friction force. And there's the normal force. So we need to break the applied force into components in our resolved free body diagram. So we've got a couple vectors that point up. We have normal force plus a component of the applied force, F sine theta, in the forward direction we have the other component of the applied force, F cosine theta. Downward is mg. And to the left is the friction force. Right, so the normal force added with F sine theta is equal to mg. Or in other words, the normal force is equal to mg minus F sine theta. And that makes sense, right? We're subtracting something because if you pull somewhat upward on the string, that's going to make the contact between the suitcase and the ground a little less than what it would typically be, right? So it's less than the value of mg by this component of the applied force. So in place of n, we keep the mu, but in place of n, we write mg minus f sine theta. So that covers mu n, and we still need to multiply that times the displacement delta s, and then remember, we have to put a negative sign in front of all that. So what does this calculate to? Okay, 0 0.4 times uh, 20 times 9.8 minus 100 times the sine of 30. Well, sine of 30 is 1 half. And then all that multiplied by 15. Of course, this 20 is kilograms, and the 9.8 is meters per second squared, and the 100 is newtons, and the 15 is meters. A kilogram meter per second squared is itself a newton, and the newtons minus some other newtons is newtons, and newtons multiplied by meters is joules. I think at this point we need to grab a calculator and see what we get. Now we can do 100 times 0 0.5. That's easy. That's 50. Uh, if we round up from 9.8 to 10, then this is 20 times 10. That's 200, and 200 minus 50 would be 150. 
and uh, 4 times 150 would be 600, so 0.4 times 150 would be 60, and then 60 multiplied by 15 should be 900 joules. Hey, no calculator needed. Work done by gravity, I think you can argue that that's zero in the same way that work done by the normal force was zero because the angle between the force of gravity and the displacement is an angle of 90 degrees. So the net amount of work, well, we can just find it. Oh, uh, I caught a mistake. The work done by friction, I almost got it right. It's not 900 joules, it's negative 900 joules. There we go. So the net amount of work is positive 1,300 joules minus 900 joules for a total of 400 joules. Determine the final speed of the suitcase. Well, we've got a resolved free body diagram, and we can use that to get an acceleration, and then from the acceleration we can do kinematics and figure out what the final speed is. So let's give that a shot. It looks like the net force is F cosine theta minus the force of friction. F cosine theta is in the direction of the acceleration. Friction is opposite the direction of the acceleration. So we can say MA is equal to F cosine theta minus mu N. But remember, N is MG minus F sine theta. So our acceleration is F cosine theta minus mu times mg minus F sine theta, all divided by m. Let's plug in the numerical values. So a is 100 times the cosine of 30 degrees minus 0 0.4. Let me double check that. Yeah, that's right, 0 0.4 times 20 times 10 minus 100 times 0.5, all divided by 20. Uh, I believe cosine of 30 is 0 0.866. So we have A equals 86.6 minus, that's 200, that's 50, so that's 150. So that's 60. So 86.6 minus 60, all divided by 20. 26.6 over 20, or 2.66 over 2, or 1.33. And we're assuming the units are meters per second squared, although I skipped plugging units into my work. So we have an acceleration, we have an initial velocity of zero, we're asked for a final velocity, and we also have a displacement of 15 meters. So final velocity squared equals initial velocity squared plus two times acceleration times displacement. So our final velocity is the square root of two times 1.33 meters per second squared times 15 meters. So we get a result of 6.3 meters per second. Now that's pretty fast. That's about, that's getting close to 15 miles per hour, which means this person is uh, sprinting pretty quickly by the end of that 15 meter pull. So the numbers might not be entirely realistic, possible, but um, at the very least, this is another problem uh, that provides good practice in calculating work for various forces. Uh, what we'll find in the next approaching lesson is another way that we can find the final speed if we've already calculated the net amount of work. So here's a preview of coming attractions. Uh, there's something known as the work kinetic energy theorem. which basically states the net amount of work done on any object is always equal to that object's change in a quantity.
quantity known as kinetic energy, uh, which is energy of motion. And we'll find that we can define that quantity kinetic energy as one half multiplied by the mass of an object multiplied by its speed squared. So if we can calculate a net amount of work and we know it's equal to a change in kinetic energy and in turn we know how to calculate kinetic energy, we can often use this approach as a way to solve for objects final velocity. It's nice to have more than one approach for solving for a quantity. So we can use Newton's laws and kinematics to get the result for final velocity and in future example problems we'll use the work kinetic energy theorem as well and if both results give us the same answer then we can be certain we got it right. Okay, thanks for watching.